is all protein created equal? So if you're looking at an animal protein, is it pretty much the same as a vegetable protein? No. So not all protein is the same. The source really does matter. So an animal protein is what we would call a complete protein. And the reason for that is it has all nine of the essential amino acids that our own bodies cannot make on their own. Uh, a few of those are like leucine, isoleucine, and methionine. I think methionine being, I'll talk about leucine later, but methionine is really an interesting one because it is actually uh, the primary, what they call the start codon for all protein synthesis uh, from RNA, right? So methionine is the very first thing that gets tagged on to the beginning of a lot of pretty much every protein that our body makes. So it's one of the nine essential amino acids. Um, and we have to get those from our diet. We have to get the nine essential amino acids from our diet. We cannot make those ourselves. There's uh, 11 other amino acids, so there's 20 in total, and nine of them we are not able to make. Now, vegetables... Uh, are considered an incomplete protein, either because they don't have all of the nine essential amino acids, or they don't have all nine in great enough quantities to be considered a nutritionally uh, significant. So they might have all nine, but they're so low in leucine that it, it might as well not be there. Right? Okay. So that's what we're considering a non-complete amino acid. Mm -hmm. If sense. you're eating keto vegetarian, you can get all nine essential amino acids. You just have to mix vegetable sources and mix in uh, some legumes. Now, we don't eat a lot of legumes or beans on the keto diet, so that can be a little bit tougher. So you really have to look at the um, amino acid profile for every, for every source and try and come up with something that is balanced if you're eating uh, a vegetarian keto so diet. So Google or an app like Chronometer is going to become your best friend just because Chronometer, Chronometer gets really detailed on protein types for different vegetables so that you can kind of mix and match yeah. based on your yeah. dietary preferences. Yep. And so if you're eating keto vegetarian, you're also most likely going to have to supplement some amino acids so that you're getting the full complement of amino acids. If you're not and you're getting and you're eating a very, very high fat version of keto, like 80, 85% fat, and you're not getting enough of these amino acids, you might see your skin might start to look tired, your hair might start to get thin, your nails might not grow as much. There's just a lot of things that come from uh, amino acids that it, it, you're gonna notice a deficit, and it might take time for that deficit to show up. So if you're going to change to a vegetarian or you're um, looking to modify the, how much protein you're eating, then just realize that those changes don't take effect overnight and that your body has some stores of this built up um, so you might not see any detrimental effects till later. It doesn't mean that you're not doing yourself damage by not eating these amino acids. It just means that you're not going to see it right away. Um, so if you're interested in muscle protein synthesis, then you're going to want to be concerned with the BCAAs, so what they call the Does branch. Does that mean muscle building? Yes. Okay. M muscle building. Um, muscle protein synthesis. I'll just call it MPS. Okay. How about that? Um, so you're going to be concerned with the branch chain amino acids. So, uh, And the primary one you're going to want to get a lot of is leucine. And this is the one that in most vegetable proteins is very low. Okay. And in collagen. So you're going to want to supplement with some additional leucine if you're a vegetarian keto dieter um, or if you're interested in just building muscle and you're on a regular keto diet you can supplement with BCAAs. I would not get overly concerned with um, gluconeogenesis from consuming too much protein especially if you are lifting a lot of uh, weights if you're doing strength training if you're very active uh, Unless you're really, really pushing your, your protein levels up into the 40 or 50% range, um, you, you shouldn't really have any problems. I would keep it down. I usually keep my protein intake closer to 25 to 30%. But I also supplement with some BCAAs 
uh, and other amino acids. So. Okay. And then. Oh, we'll... and I did want to make a point because the question actually included uh, was kind of phrased like, if you go from a zero fiber all meat diet to a high fiber vegetable diet. So a lot of people don't consider that there's actually fibrous tissue in muscle, right. mm -hmm. in, meat, in meat, right? So collagen, connective tissue, ligaments, and things like that, the, that film that connects the, the meat to the rib or something like that, that is actually connective fibrous tissue and can actually be fermented in the gut and act as a prebiotic prebiotic, just like fibers from vegetables can. So there is fiber in meat, just doesn't show up on a label.